Hi, I'm Bruce Weinstein. Today, I'm going to talk about what's in this bowl, which I know looks just like some ordinary chocolate chip cookies, but they are far from ordinary. I'm going to show you how to make these crunchy, fabulous vegan chocolate chip cookies. The fat that's going in these cookies is not going to be butter because we're doing vegan cookies and butter comes from an animal. So my fat of choice for these cookies is coconut oil. That doesn't look like oil. That looks like shortening. It's a super saturated fat, which is why it's solid at room temperature. So kind of looks like Crisco, but has the faintest, faintest hint and smell of coconut, which is going to be really great in these cookies. So first thing, take our stand mixer. Mark always says in our cooking classes, you bought your big ass stand mixer for a reason. Use it. You want to use it. Get it out. Don't do this with a hand mixer. And if it's all you have, you could do it. But take out your stand mixer for this. So in goes our coconut oil. We have 12 tablespoons. That's 170 grams of coconut oil. Into that, we're going to put a cup of sugar. That's 210 grams. This is just plain white sugar, ground sugar. Let's get it all in there. I don't want to lose any of that. Okay. I'm going to let this get started first. Always on slow because if you start a mixer fast, you're likely to have it rain sugar and flour all over your kitchen. And once this starts to get mixed in, we're going to add the secret ingredient of these vegan cookies. And that's what's in this bowl. And that's tahini. Now tahini is just ground up sesame seeds. It's a sesame paste. If you've ever cooked with peanut butter, you know that things dry out. Well, tahini does the same thing. It's going to make these cookies a little drier, a little crunchier, which is why there's a lot of sugar, and which is why one of these secret ingredients is going to go in next to counterbalance the dryness of the tahini. Now that the sugar and the fat have started to blend, I'm going to turn the mixer off. I'm going to lift it up, and I'm going to put in the tahini. And we're going to let that cream away with the sugar and the coconut oil. Now, the trick about cookie making of any kind of cookies is that at this moment in time, you cannot overbeat that. You could let that go, and let that go, and let that go. The lighter that gets, the airier that gets, that's the better kind of cookie you're going to get. The cookies won't be so thin and flat. They'll have some body, they'll have some height, and in this case, they'll have some bit of super crunch. I just turned it up. I'm going to make sure it really gets good and mixed up. Okay, that's really smooth. It's lovely. So I said we had a secret ingredient to balance the tahini. Well, that's going to be maple syrup. One half cup or 120 mLs of maple syrup. Look how dark that maple syrup is. It's really important that you use a darkly colored syrup. It'll have much more flavor than the super light amber, which are lovely and delicate. But when you're baking, you want to get a dark amber, a nice, rich flavored maple syrup. Also, vanilla. There's a lot of vanilla here. We have one and a half tablespoons or 25 milliliters of vanilla. And the reason we have the vanilla that much, well, it's going to, to blend with the maple syrup and give us a great flavor. It's also going to sort of smooth out the tahini edge. Tahini can have, I said, not only dry out the batter, but it can actually dry out the flavor too. So all that vanilla will brighten the flavor and balance out all that tahini. Now it's time for our dry ingredients. Now I know there are probably a lot of professionals out there. My friends Alice Medrick and Rose Levy Barenbaum are going to yell at me if they ever see this. I am not mixing my dry ingredients first before they go in. When I do a cake, sometimes I'll do that. And why do you do that? You do that to make sure the salt and the leavening is evenly blended. But to be honest, using a mixer like this and with the small quantities we have here, this teaspoon of salt and this teaspoon of baking soda, seven grams each, are going to get beautifully mixed in without any problem. And watch this. They're now blended in, and I don't have to worry about them blending evenly with the flour. What kind of flour? Two cups of all-purpose or plain flour. That's 300 grams. And I'm going to lift this up because I don't want to get flour everywhere. If you watched one of Mark's videos where he went to dump a bowl of cheese in his pot, Half of it went on the floor. I prefer mine kind of going in the bowl. So, and we have one cup of rolled oats, 100 grams. Don't use steel cut oats. Don't use instant oats. These are plain rolled oats. Notice I keep lifting this up. It makes it easier. I don't have to try and finagle in between there, which is when I'll probably dump it on the floor. I don't want to do that. Okay, so now once again, we're going to put this on slow. 
because if I put it on fast, we'll have flour flying everywhere. Now this is coming together into a beautiful moist cookie dough. Oh, that's gorgeous. Now, chocolate chips. Look how many I've got here. This is crazy. I've got three cups of mini chocolate chips. That's 580 grams. Now, the thing about mini chocolate chips, I've been making these cookies for years. And I used to use big fat chocolate chips. And when I shape the cookies, the big ones tend to fall out. And then when I take a bite of a cookie, not every bite got enough chocolate for me. This way, these mini chips blend in beautifully. Every bite gets enough chocolate. Just make sure you're using a good bittersweet or semi-sweet chocolate. If you can get the percentages on it, you want something that's at least 60% cocoa solids for a good bittersweet chocolate. So, there's so much. Why? Because in my opinion, and Mark's opinion, and we came to this together, a good chocolate chip cookie has just enough batter to hold the chocolate chips together. So we're gonna dump in the first cup and a half, and we're gonna dump in the second cup and a half. Oh my goodness, that's a lot of chocolate chips. Close it, and once again on low, because we don't want chocolate chips raining everywhere, and I'm letting the machine mix them in. I know a lot of recipes say do it by hand, you don't want to get the cookies too tough. For the 30 seconds it's gonna take for these chocolate chips to get mixed in, let the machine do this. This is a really thick dough. Let the machine do the work for you. That's it, look at that. Now, how do we know it's right? It still looks pretty crumbly, right? Well, if I grab some and I squeeze it, look at that, it holds together. That's what I'm looking for. Now, we need to shape them. We need to take about two tablespoons of dough. Now, you can eyeball it if you're really good at it. You could roll it and you could put it out. Or you could do what I do, which is I take one of these little cookie scoops or ice cream scoops. This is a two tablespoon size scoop. And if I just get it down into my dough, flatten it, and then I can squeeze it out there. I'm gonna keep going. I'm going to scoop these all out. I'm gonna do it on multiple trays. Then I'm gonna bake them one tray at a time at 350 degrees or 175 centigrade, that 350 is Fahrenheit, or gas mark four. I'm gonna give you a time range because there's no guarantee they'll be done in 12 minutes or no guarantee they'll be done in 15 minutes, but it'll be somewhere between 12 and 15 minutes. Start checking them at 12. You want them to be nice and brown. If you lightly touch them, even though they're hot in the oven, they should be firm. And then you'll take them out, we'll let them cool, and I'll show you what they look like at that point. I have a confession to make. Look at these giant cookies. I didn't do these in the two tablespoon size I was showing before. As I started putting them on the cookie sheets and forming them by hand, I went a little big and I actually made them about a quarter cup size each. When they were two tablespoons, I said that you would cook them for 12 to 15 minutes. If you're using a quarter cup and making these giant cookies, these actually baked for 21 minutes. So just keep that in mind. You can go with more dough, you'll bake it longer. Also, when I was showing how to make them and put them on the tray, I didn't mention that the tray was lined. I was using Silpat, you can use that, or you can use parchment. What you end up with either way are these amazing, oh, they're still warm, oh. And while they're still warm, they're still a little bit soft. They're not yet that super crunchy, which will happen as they cool. Look at all of that chocolate. And mm, don't tell people they're vegan. Just tell them they're maple oat tahini chocolate chip cookies. For a list of the ingredients to make these cookies, just look below this video and click more. You'll see all the ingredients plus little notes that Mark's written out about them. Also, subscribe to Cooking with Bruce and Mark here on our YouTube channel and you won't miss a single one of the deep digs or Instant Pot recipes that we put up all the time. And also subscribe to our podcast, also called Cooking with Bruce and Mark. Either way, stay with us for some more delicious recipes every single week, cooking with Bruce and Mark.